Cabbages, a plant that I have a long and storied history with as a gardener. Four or five years ago in my old home, I grew a massive cabbage. It got me hooked on the plant, and then I hunted down giant cabbages from a friend across the pond in the UK who holds a Guinness Book of World Records. I sourced some seeds. I lovingly cared for these seeds. I named the plant San Juan Cabbage Strano, a little fun play on a city here in California. I thought that might give it the vigor it needed. Unfortunately, three generations of San Juan Cabbage Strano's line have died on my watch. And that's why in today's video, I'm gonna give you the tricks and tips and mistakes to avoid when growing the beautiful cabbage. Mistake number one is just growing one type of cabbage. I encourage you to try out different varieties. So this is a green cabbage right here. It's a longer maturing variety that I pretty much am gonna get all of them at the same exact time. Now in my case, that's not a big deal. I can give them to family and friends, process into, into sauerkraut, but if you are in a smaller space or you don't really have a plan, this can be a bad idea. You can grow a smaller, quicker maturing one for fresh coleslaw, and then you can grow a couple of these larger ones for storage or sauerkraut. Another reason why you may wanna grow different varieties is because not every cabbage variety matures at the exact same time. Let's say this one here is 80 days and you can get one that grows in 100 days. You could actually start those at the same time in the season, but the harvest window would be staggered by an average of 20 days. So it gives you a little time to actually use the stuff that's coming out of the garden. Mistake number two is not fertilizing your cabbage enough. If you think about what a cabbage is, it's really these large fan leaves that start to wrap and curl around and form this head. But from a botanical perspective, it's really just leaves that have been sort of wrapped on one another. What that means, what leafy growth mostly needs is a lot of nitrogen. Actually, cabbage is classified as a heavy feeder, much like something like a tomato is a heavy feeder. So at the beginning of the season, a really good thing to do when you transplant that cabbage in, grab some compost or grab some high nitrogen fertilizer, go around the base of the plant and start sprinkling or filling maybe about a foot out or so. And that kind of brings us to our next mistake. Mistake number three, ties in to the last mistake because cabbages are sort of greedy plants. They need a lot of food and they also need a lot of water and space. It's an interesting plant because you have these large fan leaves that fan out in a pretty wide space. I mean, this is about a two, two and a half foot across cabbage from leaf to leaf, but the actual head itself is maybe about six to eight inches in size. That being said, you still have to give it that space so that it has the water and food that it needs which means you need to give it at least 12 inches on either side, up to 24 inches on either side, depending on the variety. And on the seed packet, you can usually see what that spacing requirement is. But this is something where you really need to visualize the end state of the plant, how that seed is going to actually show up as a final ready to harvest plant so you don't crowd it out. Mistake four has to do with placement and timing. Timing first, if you mess your timing window up, the, the plant's just not gonna grow that well. So when temps drop below 45 degrees, it's gonna struggle, might trigger an early flower, early bolt. And also if you try to grow cabbage like straight through the summer, you're gonna have a bad time. But the more pertinent mistake you can make here is the placement of your cabbage in your garden. So cabbage is a leafy green technically, but unlike maybe a lettuce or a spinach or a kale, it can actually handle a little bit more sun than those plants, mostly because it's forming this head, it's getting a little bit more compact, it's not as loose and airy and sort of drying out in intense heat. That being said, only during that heading up phase is when you wanna be giving it a lot of sun. In our area, for example, you get some pretty decent early spring or late winter hot periods where you would want to shade this out in the afternoon. So I would say as a general rule, give it a lot of sun as it's starting to head up. But then once it does head up, you can hopefully have it in a spot where by that time, it's getting a little bit of protection or afternoon shade. Mistake number five is watering. And it's mostly on the overwatering side rather than the underwatering side. Underwatering is mostly a mistake you'd make early on in its life while these leaves are still heading up. Remember, this is, this is mostly water, guys. So giving it some water is gonna help it grow. But the problem comes when the cabbage gets to heading size. It really starts to head. That 
that head's getting a little bit tight. What happens, especially in rain, is the water pressure can actually pop the cabbage and it can split right at the top. And you know, that might not be a big deal for you if you're gonna use it for coleslaw or something, but if you do want that nice, perfect, beautiful head, make sure to dial your watering down just a tad as that cabbage starts to head and tighten up. And with that said, I'm gonna harvest one right now and show you my favorite way of harvesting. It's called the decabagitation. You go ahead and grab it like this and you give it that twist. Oh, hold on. You go ahead and grab it like this, give it that twist. And there you go, right out of the ground, a nice, beautiful cabbage. Hopefully this mistakes helped you grow your first epic cabbage. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.